Hello, my name is Gabe Steiner, and I'll be talking about the electronics portion of this project. We have five separate servos controlling five different actions, all mounted within the head of our jack-in-the-box, along with a red LED inside the mouth. All of these are wired to the box using a custom quick connect cable. The servos are driven off a regulated 5 volt power source and controlled by an Arduino at Mega. We purchased a 12 volt 6 amp power supply as our main power source and use 4 voltage regulators to drop it down to 5 volts which could be used for the servos. As you can see, these voltage regulators share a common ground which also serves as a heat sink although we've had no problems whatsoever with overheating. You can see two 12 volt blue light bars inside the box which serve as power on indicators. Finally, the sound portion of this project is accomplished by using an Arduino Uno with a wave shield. Hi, I'm Don Schmitz and I'm going to talk about the mechanical aspects of our project. Our crank assembly is from an emergency flashlight. The crank sends inputs to the Arduino ranging anywhere from 0 to 5 volts depending on how you turn the crank. The main spring was made by coiling a long wire from the inside of a mattress around a pipe and then stretching it and cutting it to the desired length. The latch is a basic spring return latch. The servo alone wasn't strong enough to pull the latch, so we developed a basic lever to increase the pulling force. Hi, I'm Stefan Irwin, and I'm going to talk about our jack-in-the-box programming techniques that we used. The programming for the jack-in-the-box is essentially divided into two parts. The master program runs on a Mega 2560 and controls the servos as well as the crank function. The slave program runs on an Uno and controls audio playback using a wave shield available from Adafruit. The master program waits until it reads an output from the crank. Once that happens, it sends a message to the slave over the I2C bus to play the crank sound effect. As soon as the crank sound is finished, the master opens the latch and begins playing through the actions. For every action, it sends a message to the slave to play the sound file corresponding to that action. The slave program is based off the Play 6 example available on Adafruit's website. It contains additional code to receive and interpret the I2C message sent by the master. This allows the slave to essentially function as an I2C controlled digital audio player. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. I'm Jim Sefcik, and I'm going to be talking to you about the cosmetics portion, as well as the man hours and cost of our project. The theme was Billy the Puppet from the Saw movie series. The jack we used was a ventriloquist dummy that we modified using paper mache and clay, as well as adding styrofoam balls for the cheeks. The box itself was then painted, stenciled, and lacquered. Game over.